Good evening, dear friends, and welcome to our Thursday evening vigil, Gaia's Vigil for Peace. And I welcome you to this table of love, where we come as pilgrims on a journey, pilgrims seeking wholeness and spiritual wellness. But before we begin, could we just spend a minute or two just quietly reflecting in our heart that we are a beloved of God, a child of the Supreme, a child of Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh. Let us just embrace that knowing. Let us come back to who we truly are, a beloved of God, a child of the Supreme. And we light a candle for peace, for peace in the heart of every child of God. And we light this light in recognition of the Diphamask energies of peace. Diphamask, the, di the Divine Masculine, the Cosmic Christ, and the Divine Feminine, Magdalena. And we invite, we invoke, and we call upon them to speak to our hearts in the coming 30 minutes or so that we have together and that we are empowered to reawaken within us the love of all that is sacred. Let us be at peace now. And with each in breath that we breathe, we breathe in the love of the cosmic Christ. We breathe in the love of the divine feminine, Magdalena. So let us just be still and use the greatest gift that we have been given by God, the gift of free will. Yes, we have been given a precious gift to choose, to allow God touch us or walk away. And though many today are called by God to embrace diphamask energy, the energies of the Cosmic Christ with Magdalena. They walk away. They walk away through fear. Fear. Some walk away because I've heard them say to me when I was on the circuit doing mind-body-spirit events around the country and abroad, all the energies I work with are inferior to the energies they work with. And when I asked them who their energies were, they would say, oh, it was a spirit of a German soldier in World War II. And I would say, but that's not six dimensional energy. That's third dimensional energy. And they would look at me in disgust, throw a tantrum, and walk away in a huff. It takes a person of real courage and real humility when you come into the presence of the Cosmic Christ and Magdalena. But the one thing I've discovered in my journey is that they do not take prisoners. They do not entertain procrastinators. They only welcome those willing to take a leap of faith, to swallow one's pride 
and to fall into the arms of a beloved God. And interestingly, you and I are both aware that with all the beautiful faith traditions we have in our world, Buddhism, Hinduism, Sikhism, Judaism, Islam, Baha'i, Paganism, Wiccanism, Christianity, they all have produced some of the most amazing spiritual teachers. Rumi, Osho, Muhammad, Jesus, Gandhi, the Lord Buddha, Vishnu, Ganesh, Krishna, Sri Chimoy, Sai Baba, Mia Baba, so many beautiful men and women who were willing, willing to trust their heart, their teacher. And if you're willing to trust your heart and take that leap of faith into that unknowing, unknown, then you will know, you will see, you will experience the healing touch of the Supreme. What I'd like to do now is to just share with you, if I may, some beautiful words from the course we are running at present with our tertiary oblates who are in training to be lay monastics. And it's such a privilege for me to be supporting two of our tertiary oblates, Sister Jennifer and Sister Elaine, because I've read this book so many, many times, and each time I read it, I'm learning so much more. I can't honestly say I've come to a place where I know it all, because I don't, because I'm learning, I'm a pilgrim on a journey. But let me just for a moment share these words. In the fifth mansion of entering the castle, your soul, it looks at dissolving into holiness from the silkworm to the butterfly. And the great Teresa Vavla, one of the great women doctors in the Christian church, says, Oh friends, how could I ever describe the riches, the treasures and delights to be found inside the fifth dwelling. There is no way of knowing how to talk about such things. But she goes on to challenge you. Mm. She leaves no stone unturned for the soul seeking mystical relationships with the divine. She allows you walk with her graciously. She nurtures you. She coaxes you. She teases you. She challenges you. And one such challenge, two of our oblates found recently, and it was rather beautiful. She says, we all undergo some exaggerated life experiences in archetypal circumstances. For example, everyone suffers the loss of a loved one. Some people even lose everything. And everyone they love. How challenging. We all experience some sort of betrayal, but some people are betrayed in breathtakingly cruel ways. Most of us go through periods of boredom and depression, but some seem never to break out of their cycles. Individuals in states of extreme exaggerations of the human experience 
may seem as if they are frozen in one season of the year, unable to cycle from winter to spring, autumn to summer. Wow. But these situations are meant to force you to make a choice between living as a victim, powerless, and growing in a new way with a new awareness, ripe for personal transformation. And she speaks the truth. It is a cosmic standoff. It forces you to face and use your inner power. You decide. Is your life a spiritual sojourn or just a day-to-day -day existence to suffer until the end? A cosmic standoff might unfold for an alcoholic, for example, who lives a life in which every day begins and ends the same way always focused on getting the next drink. Nothing else matters. The entire world exists only to satisfy their craving. The soul cannot find its way into this person's intuitive circuits, either through the conscience or through the dream state which is saturated with alcohol. How tragic. And then Teresa says, then he, then he bottoms out. Will he continue to be subject to the excuses and stories? His ego tells him that he's not an alcoholic and can quit any time he likes. How many times have you heard that story? Or will he animate the power of his soul and begin his withdrawal from the authority of the ego and surrender it to God? There's the challenge. This is his moment of transformation, his opportunity to leave the cocoon. And that's how it is for the soul on the journey. We are challenged by the spirit of love. We're challenged to face our greatest fear. We're challenged to look at our life patterns. We are, look, we are guided to look at our demons. Yeah, and face them through the eyes of love. Not through the eyes of fear, but through the eyes of love. Let me read to you some comments from our student oblates that they found exhilarating and challenging. Teresa says here, Paradox is the language through which God communicates with us. Of course we do the same in return. We delight, for example, in imagining God in nature or seeing the divine expressed in the birth of a child. In these settings and events, cameos of the divine, the alchemy for all, is perfect. When we have these divine moments, we are usually feeling spiritually or physically safe. Our hearts are open and our spiritual defenses are down. We do not expect to hear the voice of God in the mouth of a newborn 
or flaring out from a setting sun, so we feel safe looking at the world around us and can afford to see God everywhere. We are rarely open, however, to seeing the presence of God within ourselves, and we fear intimacy with the divine unless, wait for it, it is on our terms. Wow! Let me read that again, because that is a cliffhanger and it catches some of our oblates out and it challenges them to revisit their old patterns of thinking. We are rarely open, however, to seeing the presence of God within ourselves and we fear intimacy with the divine unless it is on our own terms. When we need help, we want that help to come exactly as we need it, exactly when we need it, causing as little discomfort as possible. We want constant proof that God hears our prayers and monitors our physical survival. But we do not really want to make eye contact with the divine because of the consequences. After encountering God, we would have to live a relentlessly conscious, compassionate life, and we would have to overlook the behavior of people in our world who continue to live as we once did consciously unconscious and treat them with understanding and compassion. These words are certainly thought-provoking and my purpose here is not to challenge you to fear but to allow the energies of the cosmic Christ and the divine feminine aspect of God empower you to see your life through the eyes of love. You and I both know that many will say to you, Oh, I love God. Oh, God is my all. Everything I do is for God. Oh. And in the next breath, Things change. Many give lip service to God. You've met them. I'm sure you've worked with them. And we have to pray for them. But it's not those who say, Lord, Lord, Allah, Allah, Jehovah, Jehovah, who will enter the kingdom of heaven. Or will they? I believe it is those who surrender their heart to their fear and embrace their fear and who can look at God eye to eye and see in their life the touch of God, the mystery unfolding that they are loved. We may not feel that love, but loving God isn't about feeling. Following God, serving God as an ambassador of peace, be it as a monastic, be it as an imam, a rabbi, a hairdresser, a nurse, a teacher, a housewife, a therapist. It's not about feeling. It's not an emotion. Is it? It's something much deeper. Our love is a way of life. And we try to demonstrate that love by how we live that life and how we embrace others. Let us relax now. And let us come and meet the beloved, the cosmic Christ and Magdalena. 
Come with us on a journey. It's a short journey. I want you to walk with me through a beautiful woodland, a sacred woodland. And the walkway is carpeted in the most beautiful flowers. And the air that you breathe has the most beautiful fragrances that you've ever inhaled in your life. And as you walk through this canopy of trees coming into flower, you can hear the birds singing. You can experience nature unfolding before you. And then at the end of this tunnel, there is a light. And the light calls you. It is the diaphragmatic energy of God. It is the divine feminine, Magdalena, with the divine masculine, Jesus the Cosmic Christ, the twin flames of divine love, and they're there, yes, in this woodland of love, you see them, they call you, and they come to you, they meet you halfway, and as they approach you, you become aware in your heart of the most beautiful love, a love you've never experienced. It's not a controlling love. It's not a selfless, vindictive, selfish love. It's purely selfless. It is divine. And it's calling you by name. Come, sit with us. Let us be still in each other's energy. And you're alarmed, alarmed that you have to sit, alarmed that you might have to face some great trial or tribulation or do something out of the ordinary. But as you look up, you see the look of love in the eyes of the Christ. And instantly your fear is dispelled. And Magdalena reaches out her hand whilst holding the hand of the Christ and asks you to take her hand. And the moment you reach out and touch your hand, within you, the feminine energy of God comes alive. You become one. And then the Christ reaches out his hand to you and you touch it. And instantly you experience the cosmic vital forces of love empower you, embrace your masculine side. So now you are embracing the divine masculine and the divine feminine energy of God. In the touch of Jesus and Magdalena, you become a trilogy of love, a trilogy of divine love, where there is balance, harmony. And that facilitates an instant divine connectedness. And you suddenly step out of yourself and you walk into six dimensional energy. And you can see you can see the face of your God, Goddess. And all around you, you are aware of the messages of God, the angels and archangels. You are aware of the ancestors. You are aware of the great spiritual teachers, 
not just of your faith, but of the faiths of all religions. And they come to you. And they consolidate this trilogy of love. And your heart is growing and growing. And your mind is taken over by this trilogy of love. It's brought into subjection to the heart. So there is no fear. There can be no fear. For love of the diaphragmatic energies of God through Jesus the Cosmic Christ and Magdalena is activated now within your soul's DNA. And you are completely safe. You are still. And you are in the presence of God. Feel it. Allow your soul, your higher self, embrace all that is through the surrendering of your heart to divine truth, divine oneness. And as you hold the hand of the Cosmic Christ and the Divine Feminine Magdalena, that trilogy of love is levitating and you are lifted up where love supreme is what's speaking to your heart that you are an essential part of the divine oneness of God that you are the heartbeat of God that you are the face of God. Relax. Relax and embrace this precious gift of Diphamas love. The trilogy of love. Feel it. Allow it speak to you. Words of affirmation that you are not useless, hopeless, that you are light divine, that you are the beating heart of God. In a world that may have lost its way, but you have not lost your way. Because you now are reactivating your soul's DNA that you had before you were born. And with each in-breath that you breathe, you are becoming not only a child of God, but a divine spark flowing from the hearts of the Cosmic Christ and Magdalena. Stay with that. And allow your eyes to behold the face of God Hold the majesty of God to enfold the mystery of this love trilogy. Now listen to 
the language of love speak to your heart. And as you breathe in, you are breathing in not only the breath of God, but the power of God. And it's empowering you. Take back your power from those who've wronged you, hurt you, and set them free. Set free the memories that hold you in entrapment. And now see your soul like the butterfly's wings flying into the arms of God. You are in the presence of God. And relax in that love. Relax in the mystery of divine love for you. Be at peace now. Be at peace and allow the inner voice of the Christ and Magdalena speak to you now and speak to you every day that you live. And whenever doubt assails you, fear, depression, sadness, bless it, release it. centered in that trilogy of love you with the cosmic Christ and the divine feminine Magdalena three in one and one in three and you are totally safe in the presence of all that is And now as you stand, you sense the Christ and Magdalena release their hand from yours. And there isn't a loss here, because you've been self-empowered to walk the light as a vortex of light. And as they leave you, they've not left you. Because their essence and their love is now within your being. So when you return to this place, you bring their love inside you. And they will never leave you. Because you are in them and they are in you. Be still now.